Hey guys, welcome back. Last week we talked about Z-Spheres. This week we're going to talk about user interface, brushes, and do some sculpting. So if you haven't already watched the Learn ZBrush in 12 Minutes video, I recommend you go back and watch that because it's going to teach you about all these basic buttons and brushes and menus and all of the things and what they do. Uh, today we're going to learn how to customize where to put all of our brushes by customizing our user interface. So if you go up here to Preferences, click on Config, and click Enable Customize. What this does is it allows you to put anything anywhere. So you go to your brush menu. We're going to select the clay build with brush. Now once you select a brush, go up to the brush palette and it stores all the different brushes that you've used up here. Hold Control and Alt, grab the standard brush, bring that down, and you're just going to do this with as many brushes as you use. Pinch tool, you get the idea. Once you got all your brushes down at the bottom, you can hold Control Alt and just kind of move them around and line them up the way that you want. So after you've lined up your brushes and straightened everything out the way that you want it, go back up to Preferences. Turn Enable Customize off, and now you hit the Save UI button, hit Save, go back up to Preferences and hit Store Config. It's going to store that so that every single time you open ZBrush, these settings are saved and it's going to open that same way again. You can always go back to Preferences, and you can click on Restore Standard UI, and it'll just bring back the custom default ZBrush setup, and all of that stuff will go away. We need to bring in our reference image, so if you go up here to Texture, you're gonna go here to import. There's a link to this in the description below. So this is gonna be our reference image for, you guessed it, Sonic. So in texture, this is called the spotlight. The spotlight is what allows you to use any kind of reference image or it actually puts the image on your screen. So select the texture that you want, the one that you just imported. Now it appears here under the menu and click this little plus minus button on the bottom right, add to spotlight. Now all of a sudden it takes up your whole screen it's all huge, you get this big wheel. You can click in the center of it and move it around wherever you want. If you click outside of that, you're clicking on the image and moving the image around. So usually I'll just go to opacity, turn that down quite a bit so you can see through and you can see your image and maybe scale it up a little bit. Now this little wheel won't go away unless you push Z on your keyboard. And if you wanna make the spotlight go away completely, push Shift Z and it disappears. You can do the same thing if you wanna turn it back on. Shift Z brings it back. Push Z to get your menu back. So Z turns the menu on and off. Shift Z turns the whole spotlight on and off. And that's your shortcut for that. So you go up to brush and you go down to samples and turn off spotlight projection. Once you turn that off, now you can actually sculpt on your mesh with the picture in the foreground. This is a lot of steps, <laughs> but it's necessary. I promise this is necessary. There's gonna be a little bit of back and forth here. So what we need to do is we need to scale this sphere down. So if you push W, it takes it into move scale rotate mode. Click on the green arrow here and bring it up. And we're just gonna line it up with his head. Right in the center, click this little yellow bar here on the outside to scale it down to about the right size. Now if you press Q, it'll take you out of move rotate scale mode. If you go over to the right and you click Subtool, Subtool is your menu where it stores all of the shapes that are in your scene. So right now we just have our sphere. You can go down where it says Append. The Append button allows you to add more shapes into your scene. So we're gonna add another sphere. Click on that, now you have another sphere. To switch between this sphere and this sphere, you can either click on it over here under Subtool or you can hold Alt and click on it. So we're gonna select the big sphere in the middle, hit W scale it down by clicking that yellow square in the center. Hit Q to go out of uh, out of move mode. So this time we're gonna append in a cylinder. And now the problem here is you have to hold Alt, click on the cylinder first, or you can select it over to the right. The cylinder is turned the wrong way. It's turned right side up, but we want it sideways because we want it to be the arms. So hit W. If you go into this little ring on the outside, that's gonna be your rotate line it up about as straight as you can get. And now scale it down from the center. And you move it over here, bring it down. This is also part of the scale tool. And you can do this on any axis. Yeah, that looks about right. All right, now that we made one arm, rather than making another arm, we're gonna go and we're gonna mirror this one. So with your cylinder selected, go up to Z plugin, go down here to Subtool Master, 
click on mirror. Make sure you have the X axis selected here because that's going to pop it over to the other side. Hit OK. Now you got your arm on the other side. So now we're going to do the same thing for the legs. We're going to go back to subtool, hit append, bring in a cylinder, hold alt, select that cylinder, bring it down, move it over. So now with this cylinder selected, go back up to Z plugin, go to mirror, X axis, hit OK. Now you got your legs and your arms already. For the feet, we're going to go back to append, bring in a cube this time, move it on top of the main part of the foot, rotate this this way, go back up to Z plugin, make sure your square is selected, X axis, now you got on both sides, go back to append, this time we'll bring in a ring 3D, bring it over, Z plugin, mirror, X axis. We'll go back to append, one more ring. We're going to rotate this around and this will be for the wrists. So from here we need to switch over to our side view. So hit Z, that'll bring back up your menu. And now you can click on the picture and move it over to side view. Hold Alt, click on the body, the sphere that we used for the body. Now it's just going to pivot off of the body. Move over here close to side view, hold Shift, click and drag and it'll snap to the side view perfectly. Once you append in the cone, just scale it down first then move it up. That's about everything we can do here. So we need the nose, hit append, bring in a sphere again. It's just gonna take time. Scale this out on this axis to make it a little longer. Okay, so that looks good for the side view. Now I'm gonna hit Z, bring back up my spotlight menu here, click on the picture, and we'll go back over to the front view, select the ear, we're gonna line this up, and then we're gonna go up to Z plugin, mirror, x-axis. Make sure you save. ZBrush crashes all the time and it's the most frustrating thing when you put in an hour's worth of work and it crashes. With the front view on still we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this cuff. Push Z, drag your picture over to side view. Now we need to make the spikes so go ahead and select the head. We're gonna go and close the subtool menu and open up geometry right below that and we're gonna turn on Dynamesh. So click Dynamesh here set to 128 that's fine go ahead and click dynamesh go ahead and dig into your brush tool palette menu and find snake brush if you don't already have it down here or snake hook I'm sorry side view and we're going to just make the diameter of your brush a little bigger make it about as wide as one of these spikes here we'll do the top one first so right about the center here and drag that out make the brush a little smaller drag this one out next a little smaller and there we go I just want one for each, just like that. Now activate Dynamesh, control click and drag, and that's good to go. And these don't really look like spikes, so we're gonna take our pinch brush down here, and we're gonna drag the intensity down to make these into little tips. Just kind of sharpen that out a little bit. So now I'm gonna switch back to my back view there. So we'll go back to the snake hook brush. It's gonna drag this out and down and out and down. Now that we're getting the basic shape, we're gonna have to go in and make some adjustments. For some of these, you're gonna kinda have to guess a little bit, just based on your three views, and kinda eyeball it, and pull these parts out at the right angle that looks right based on your picture here. So go back to append, green square here, scale this up till it looks about the right shape, and then just scale it down. Go to Z plugin, hit mirror, X axis, hit OK. So with your cube selected here, we're going to mask. Make sure you turn on symmetry for this. We're going to mask everything by holding control and clicking outside of the object. And I'm just going to unmask the center. Hold control and alt and draw right in the center. Now, if I take my snake hook brush, that's looking a little better. So we'll unmask this and maybe take the flatten brush, go to the bottom of the foot here and just sort of flatten this out a little bit. We can go over to geometry, turn on dynamesh, dynamesh, flatten a few times, dynamesh. Eventually you get something that looks more like the shape of his foot. We'll go over to subtool, append, and we're gonna create a z-sphere. Watch my tutorial on z-spheres. All you need to worry about is move, scale, rotate, and draw mode. That's all you have to do. So we'll hit W for move mode. 
and move this over and then hit Q to go to draw mode. So I'm gonna draw one on the side. See this little triangle with the circle here? Move your camera around so that you're at a just a slight angle from the first one that you drew and click on that circle and draw another one. Move your camera around, find the circle, draw one more, move, draw one more. The reason that you're clicking on that circle is so that all of these are connected at the base to this base sphere here. When I scale the one at the base, they all scale with it. Hit Q. If you start to draw and you hold shift, it creates another sphere the same size as the one before it. So I'm gonna do that twice for every single one of these. Start to draw, hold shift, draw, hold shift, 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 shift. Now if you go to move mode, pull these down, get them to look like fingers, and moving and just getting all the joints the right size, getting the fingers the right length by moving them around. Lastly, with our hand selected, we have to go over to the side menu and find adaptive skin. I'm gonna turn on my preview. Now we go up to the top, hit make poly mesh 3D. And now everything disappeared, except for the hand that you just made. You can see it's your only sub tool, but that's okay. Go back over to here, go back to this other scene and all the stuff you were working on is still here. And we're gonna append and you can see this little hand that you just made a poly mesh 3D of is available as a tool to append into your scene. I'm gonna find my original Z sphere one right here and hide it select the hand and now the hand is just its own object in my scene. At this point, now that you have all of your pieces blocked out and your character is pretty much ready to go in terms of sculpting, and rather than having to switch between every individual piece and click on every one, you can just go over to Subtool, any piece that you want to merge together, go down to Merge, and hit Merge Visible at the bottom. And that's going to go up here to your scenes, and you see here that it created a PM 3D of your all of your pieces merged together. So in this scene, there's only one subtool because you just merged all of them together. But you can go back to your original scene that you were working on. It was this one here. It has the number of subtools right there, 18. So that's your original scene, and they're still there. You can still go back and work on your original piece. But by hitting Merge Visible, you're creating a new scene with only one subtool with all your pieces merged together. So now I'm using the clay builder brush for this, just for a little bit of texture. And then I'm gonna use the flatten brush to get that nice, clean angle. And then maybe a little bit of smoothing. You don't wanna use your smooth brush too much. Because if you do, it's just gonna make everything look really round and it's gonna blend everything together like that. So you can go back. That's why I like the flatten brush. The flatten brush is great because it creates these nice sharp angles and it just makes your character look a lot more stylized. Whereas when you're using the smooth brush, everything just looks kind of flat and boring. So these are all of the tools that I use when I'm going through my process. All the brushes, all of the mirroring and you know everything and sort of how the UI works with the sub tools and appending in new objects. This is a good process to get you going when you're first starting out a character. Obviously sculpting takes a really long time, so I'm gonna speed this up, and by the end of the video, you'll see what I have finished, and I'm gonna leave it to you guys to finish on your own. So that does it for this video. Thank you guys. If you found this helpful, please leave a thumbs up. 
If you have any questions, you can leave me a comment in the section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future ZBrush tutorials. Next week, we're going to talk about modifying your object using grouping and polygroups. That does it for this video. Thank you guys again, and I will see you next time.